Hey, so I just learned something so interesting from this um, book. Like it's a book, uh, a book on Carl Jung. Uh, but we've we're, we've already learned how to die in becoming um, alive, and this is how life and death I feel actually mirror each other because with the creative potential we had as a creative uh, young child, right, without um, any boundaries that are known, right, until we start really stepping into the world and assuming responsibility, which, you know, some of us happens really early and some of us happens a little bit or a lot later, right? There's like a whole spectrum, but either way, there is this point, it, even if prior to, right, like the minute you were uh, born, right where we're just in womb right and we have this creative force so <clears throat> the thing about birth is it's literally another sense of psychic death and we start individualizing who we are and now the more we give ourselves up to the image we create um, that sort of leo energy where we're harnessing real force or harnessing the current in a specific way and now um, we're channeling um, sort of energy through our form, right? Through our crystal, through our body and our habits, right? Metaphysically, everything we do that's accruing substance over time in this sort of psychic realm, gaining trust, you know, with individuals, uh, so on and so forth. So all of these things, though, are incarnating um, a form, right? And so when we do that, we're actually giving up, um, we're actually attaching, and that's giving up our ability that's giving up a part of us to a form and we're sacrificing ourselves. It's a form of marriage and concretizing yourself in form, right? Just like the body is a living example and any of the images that we create in our ego of ourselves are a living example. Well, they're not living and breathing like our body, but there is something we can perceive mentally and psychically and we constantly carry out in action, right? <clears throat> so, but going forward, that is something that growing up, right, we may have had dreams beyond what we're actually physically doing. And that's because we had this creative freedom as a child, right? So in adjusting to the world and figuring out how to express ourselves responsibly and actually power ourselves, aka develop structured relationships with either nature, individuals, or like uh, yourself, right, that can somehow be creative and productive, right? Uh, and if you can just do that from yourself, well, I want to see that. But yeah, in most circumstances, either developing networks with individuals, right, and figuring out a way to hustle or developing uh, networks with nature and figuring out a way to produce. But even that, uh, that may draw people in, right, because especially if you have the goods, it probably will. But there's also a sense of needing to network and needing to be co-creational, uh, um, but not necessarily, right, if you have the goods. Um, but either way, so once we start doing this and we start channeling a specific current, right, we're giving up the spiritual element of ourself that we had in death to be free, right? Because now we're choosing a specific channel or stream or a part of the actual tree of life to participate in, right? So this is actually how uh, we've, we've learned how to die previously growing into the image that we'll have to give up and uh, mirror in this time letting go in that phase of death instead of the becoming phase of death right but if we think about what is giving up right and even incarnating in form has us give up the totality of perspective right in order to be and living in who we are and what we are right um so I just find that so interesting that life actually prepares us for death and there is so much work we put into, you know, mediating from the home space, right, growing up and hopefully, right, this is what we hope for that children have is a lot of room in the home space, right, in order to like have time to explore their creative potential and then slowly introduce them to the proper channels to express that and be creative with that right and that is that like slow dying process to where eventually that home space will dissolve entirely right with the child taking over right so it's like that 
<clears throat> that whole scenario is just like the same framework that we should take into death, whereas a lot of us don't incorporate that into our daily lives, right? And once we mature into an adult, we don't really think, unless we're like crazily religious, that we need to prepare ourselves in the same way for death that we did for life. And this is where the psychic work and the sort of Buddha, like learning how to disattach comes in. And this is where knowing what to do and when to do it, right? Because if you're disattaching at a stage where you need to be gassing up your ego and your play in the world, that's kind of flunked you know but if you're at a stage where you need to be letting go and you're really attaching and you're not like not allowing yourself to sleep right um then that's going to thrust you into the dream world where you're not going to have as much agency once you um are actually um in that space it'll be like a quick uh cut off instead of a seamless transition it'll be like a blackout like you got knocked out right instead of people that really work with their dreams and when they enter the dream space it's like ah oh, i'm back so I just thought that was interesting, worth sharing, worth thinking about. Um, so hey, bubbling.